Welcome to the first episode of Low Res DIY. Today we're going to have a look at my new to me Dell PowerEdge R610 server. We'll go over the installed hardware, create a virtual disk, install Windows, and run a few benchmarks next on Low Res DIY. I got pretty lucky with this system when I bought it because it actually came with the front bezel. Most of them on eBay don't seem to have those. Um, up front, we have six hot swappable bays. Only two of them are occupied. They have 600 gigabyte hard drives. The other four have these little trays that are just kind of like placeholders. Have your power button, pair of USB ports, a VGA connector, your DVD player or optical drive, and your LCD screen. We spin it around. On the back here, you have your iDRAC connector, a COM port, another VGA connector two more USB drives, and a Broadcom NIC with four one gigabit ports. There are a pair of redundant hard, or not hard drives, power supplies, 500 watts a piece. The way they work is if one of them will go down for any reason, the other one will pick up and the machine will never have to stop running. Let's uh, pop the lid off and have a look inside now. All right, starting from the front, we have your back plane. This one's capable of controlling six hard drives or SSDs, an internal USB port, your fan tray. This has 32 gigabytes of ECC memory, a pair of Xeon X5570 CPUs, a PERC 6i RAID controller. Back here is your iDRAC module, your Broadcom NIC that's integrated into the motherboard, and your two redundant power supplies. Let's get the uh, lid put back on this, plug in all the cables, and create that virtual disk. Okay, all the wires are hooked up. I've logged into the iDRAC system. You can see it up here in the corner. Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller 6 Enterprise Edition. Um, we're going to try to utilize this to remote access the machine as much as possible. But I did hit, hook up a keyboard and monitor just in case uh, the lag was too much. So we're going to go to Power and Power on System. We'll hit Apply. Yep, we want to do that. Go back to properties. I don't know if you can hear the fans or not, but it's firing up. You see in the corner here, the uh, system is booting. Power light came on. Let's just go back to the desktop. We can go and uh, let's launch the virtual console. We have a power supply error. We'll let this run a bit, see if that goes away. That went away. All right, let's let the system boot up. We're waiting for the uh, SAS card option to come up. I think it's control R. We'll go into it and create the virtual disk. Looks like I was wrong about the gigahertz. There it is. Control R. 2.93, not 2.3. To create a virtual disk, you'll see your options down here at the bottom. I want to hit F2. Create a virtual disk. RAID 0 is fine. It's going to be destroyed anyway. We're going to use both drives. And we'll just give it a name of, let's see, test. 
and hit OK. Create a disk. Let's hit F2 again and initial initialize it uh, and do a fast initial initialization. Wow, that's a hard word to say. Okay, we're done here. It's already created the disk. And you can see it's used both of them. It's named test. It's in a RAID 0. Let's hit escape and get out of this. I want us to press control alt delete to reboot. Once it comes back up, we're going to want to change the boot option to the uh, USB drive on the front. With the uh, virtual disk created, we need to install Windows. I've taken and created a USB drive and put the Windows ISO on it. So let's install it into one of these ports at the front of the machine and restart it. Okay, with the splash screen up, some options should show up here in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to want to hit F11 for BIOS Boot Manager. It'll continue to go through the whole booting process and give us some choices at the end. All right, you want to go down to hard drives. For some reason, they put the USB drives under hard drives. I'm, I'm not sure why, but that's where they're at. And you want to choose the front USB flash drive and hit enter. I don't know if you can see it on the monitor back there, but it's showing up over there. This is the lag I was talking about. Eventually, the cursor will catch up. So let's click next. Install now. I do not have a product key. Windows will let you use or install it and use it. It'll just give you a watermark in the lower right hand corner. And I don't believe you can personalize it with background pictures, things like that. So we're just going to pick, I do not have a product key. I'm going to choose Windows 10 Pro. And the reason I'm doing that is because the home edition will only recognize one CPU. This system has two CPUs in them, and I want to use it to its uh, fullest effect for these benchmarks. So we'll hit next. accept any agreements custom install this is the raid or the virtual disk we made the raid drive and we want to hit next and it'll go through and, and copy all its files and uh, install Windows once it's finished it'll give us a couple options we need to set up most of them we're going to ignore and just click through All right, it just finished up. That actually only took about three minutes or so. Didn't take very long. Now the system's going to reboot, and uh, we'll have a few more options, a little bit more set up, but not much. This time around, we shouldn't have to hit F11 and go through the BIOS boot manager. It should just pick up the hard drives and start from there. If not, we'll just remove that USB drive and uh, restart the machine. And I'm pretty positive it'll, it'll pick up the hard drives in, or boot from the hard drives, I guess I should say.
All right, finally, that whole process took maybe 10 minutes or so to run through. So, United States, yes. It's still the U.S. Let's skip the keyboard setup. Set up for personal use. I do not want to give that information. Let's do an offline account. Let's go ahead and limit the experience because I don't want to do that. Next, uh, force me to give a name. Let's go low res. We'll do low res. Next, next. I know I'm going to delete this window setup, but I still don't like giving them permission to access everything under the sun. You do what you want to do, but that's just me. Let's not mess with Cortana. All right, so Windows is up and running. Uh, it'll probably do a few updates. You can hear the system, the fans powering up or, or revving up a little bit there. So I'm sure it's uh, doing some updates and everything right now. I'm gonna pause the video, download uh, Cinebench. Well, I'm gonna let it do its updates. Then I'm gonna download Cinebench and Crystal Disk. We'll run those benchmarks and see how fast or slow the system is. Be right back and we're back I uh, pulled up task manager real quick hit performance and we're looking at the CPUs right now because when we when we went over the hardware portion I uh, mistakenly said that the CPUs were capable of 2.3 gigahertz actually it was 2.93 and I think they can turbo up to like 3.1 or something like that but as you can see this thing does have uh, four logical cores, two threads per, so you're looking at 16 threads. Um, I downloaded Cinebench and Crystal Disk, and we're going to run those benchmarks. What those programs do is they'll put a synthetic load on the machine, and they'll target one specific area of it. In the case of Cinebench, it's going to target the CPU and max it out. And, and then ultimately give it a score that you can compare to other machines to see where you rate. The uh, Crystal Disk uh, will target the hard drives and see how quickly reads and writes happen and things like that. So what we're going to do is let's double click on Cinebench and we're going to run the CPU version. Click Run. I'm going to bring Task Manager back up so that you can see once it starts running, like it is in the background, you can hear the fans ramping up, and it is getting pegged to 100% on every thread. So I'm going to kill that. We'll let this run out, and then I'll run it one more time just to make sure because Task Manager was using a few resources. I don't think it really... We'll make that much of a difference, but let's keep it fair. All right, it's finished and it got a score of 923 for that run. Let's run it one, one more time, like I said, without task manager up and see what happens. Okay, that time it did a little better at 9.47. So we're going to call that good. Let's close that out. 
Yes, let's go ahead and save it just in case. And run the crystal disk benchmark. All right, and we're finished. So, read writes 357, 332 for sequential, which would be three gigabytes per second, which is what the Perk 6i is capable of. And the randoms are 5.3, 9.15, and 1.5, and 7.52. Okay, we went over the hardware created the virtual disk, installed Windows, and have some baselines to compare any improvements to, and there are going to be a couple. I've already ordered two more hard drives, an H700 RAID controller, and a couple CPUs, but that's for the next video or two. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. So until then, hit that subscribe button, like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching.